Okay, welcome to another episode of Bitcoin Tech Talk. This is issue number 243 on June 7th, 2021. As always, you can find my newsletter at jimmysong.substack.com. I send this out every Monday and I read through it and post it to my podcast so that uh, you can you can get into it a little bit. Anyway, um, this episode, uh, you know, the newsletter was a little bit shorter than normal, uh, mostly because I was kind of sick from, um, you know, talking too much at the conference and I barely had a voice left uh, yesterday. It's recovered somewhat, as you guys can hear. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it. it it was a little bit shorter than it otherwise would be because I was uh, I was working with some constraints there. Anyway, let's get started. Proof, not endorsements. Bitcoin Tech Talk issue number 243. Bitcoin 2021 has shown that there are a lot of celebrities in Bitcoin. Such well-known luminaries as Ron Paul, Floyd Mayweather, Tony Hawk, and Kevin O'Leary spoke at the conference. That's not including the many other known celebrities that are into Bitcoin, from Paris Hilton to Tom Brady. The interesting thing about many of these celebrity endorsements is that they're met with an expectation of significance, as if their fans will buy Bitcoin because the celebrity did. Surely this is true of some, but is that really a good thing? People trust celebrities, which is why advertisers pay so much for their endorsement. The whole ethos behind Bitcoin is verify not trust, and in that sense, Bitcoin celebrity endorsements, Bitcoin and celebrity endorsements are not compatible. If you're buying Bitcoin because some celebrity likes it, what are you going to do if the celebrity endorses an altcoin? This is not new, of course. Roger Ver relied on his celebrity to get people to trust Bitcoin Cash. The fact that it's had two splits since then and continues to languish relative to Bitcoin shows that his celebrity only goes so far. Celebrity, in other words, is a form of centralization. Furthermore, it is by nature not a creative activity. A celebrity endorsement doesn't suddenly give a token a new feature. All it gives is better marketing. This is why I'm taking a cautious approach to El Salvador. I think it's great that a country is giving Bitcoin legal tender status. Surely this will make trading with Bitcoin much less burdensome than, say, the U.S. Yet this, too, is a form of endorsement. As with any government, endorsement comes in the form of an official, the president of El Salvador, Nayib Bukele. In other words, government approval is, in a sense, a more official celebrity endorsement, a nice marketing play within a small sphere of influence. And perhaps the marketing will not just get people into Bitcoin, but get them to stay as they recognize its real utility over the long term. I get those arguments. But remember that Bukele isn't infallible. He's going to get offers in the coming weeks from all coins of all stripes trying to convince him to give their coin legal tender status too, and perhaps in return for some pre mine This has been the downfall of so many celebrities who endorse something dumb because they believe that they are the thing that can make the dumb thing smart. They think their endorsement can create something. And for a lot of celebrity endorsements, it does. Shoes worn by Paris Hilton get popular. Cars endorsed by Tom Brady do too. Even stocks endorsed by Jim Cramer do. Thankfully, sound money isn't so susceptible to whims of fashion. Bitcoin, being sound money, has the benefit of economic incentives working for it long term. It works not because of endorsements, but because of decentralization, scarcity, and network effects. Ultimately, these advantages cannot be overcome with celebrity endorsements, and that's why such endorsements of all coins fail. El Salvador doing things to benefit Bitcoiners is great, but they are a rear guard action to protect what's already there and not creating anything new. For that, it's great, but rear guard action may disappear at any time. Bitcoin should not depend on government recognition. At best, that's a tertiary protection of what's already been built and will not build anything on its own. So that's my thought on El Salvador. Um, You know, I I am excited that there are, you know, there there is sort of like um, a a government willing to grant it legal tender status. Uh, But at the same time, I, 
I don't put my hope in it because I am sure he's getting tempted at the moment. This happens to every celebrity uh, when they when it's known that they're into Bitcoin. Every all coin uh, goes up to them and says, hey, can you endorse ours, too? We'll give you money and all sorts of things. Um, and, you know, I mean, you don't even have to be a celebrity, right? You can be a crypto influencer, quote unquote, and you will get lots and lots and lots of opportunities to endorse these things for money. In other words, you have lots of opportunities to sell out. And Bukele, uh, because he is the president of a sovereign state, will probably get more than most. And he'll be, uh, and yeah, I mean, can you imagine what Ripple's trying to do? They're probably trying to get a connection to him and say, hey, can you declare us legal tender too? And we'll give you like a large part of the pre -mite. I mean, those things are all on the table, especially if this legal tender status confers a significant benefit to Bitcoin, like, you know, getting it recognized as a foreign currency in the United States or something like that. So, um, you know, I'm kind of cautious because I know the temptations that come to all of these people and uh, and they take uh, some serious moral fortitude to be able to resist. And I'm not confident in these days that <laughs> that anyone can do that. All right, let's talk about Bitcoin. Uh, Taproot looks to be on track to lock in around Thursday or Friday. Marathon started signaling re recently. BTC.com also explained why signaling Taproot took so long. Apparently, some of their pool members had a lot of rejected shares due to the version mass not working properly. The post outlines how they fixed it and prevented their pool members from losing money. The post was enlightening and how close uh, relationships like that between pools and mining equipment owners matter and can cause some of these understandable delays. So um, that post in particular was great because uh, you got to understand um, you know what they ha actually had to do the the firmware apparently on some of the machines didn't work then they upgraded this firmware and they had to change the version mask on <coughs> on the template that they sent them and so on um, and eventually they figured it out but it, it took several rounds and that's that's what took taproot so long to do and you know when, when you get rejected shares as a pool member it, it really sucks because you're you're going to lose money um and that's something that you know they they wanted to make sure that their members didn't have uh have to deal with all right uh jameson lop examines uh, the motivation behind empty blocks as he shows many blocks are empty well after it should have taken to verify the previous block which is around 10 seconds as he outlines much of it was probably due to misconfiguration, but some others uh, a concerted attempt to make the fees go higher. The article has a lot of really good analysis, and it's worth reading to understand where we are in the industry. Stratum V2 can't come fast enough. So among other things, uh, Jameson Lop um, speculates that right around Segwit 2X, uh, there were miners uh, that were purposefully mining empty blocks as a way to put some fee pressure on Bitcoin and make Bitcoin cash look more attractive, which was absolutely fascinating. Obviously, it didn't work. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that that that's something that they can do with their game theory. Um, of course, they're losing money as a result of doing that. But yeah, I mean, that that is uh, apparently what happened. The mempool has cleared for the first time this year. There's some speculation that blockchain.com's wallet Finally, having upgraded to SegWit is the reason, as they've been long-term holdouts of SegWit, and they apparently wanted to upgrade in time for Peter Smith's talk at Bitcoin 2021. Several developers have speculated that they take about 30% of the block space given the number of pay-to-pub-key hash transactions in the mempool, and pay-to-pub-key hash outputs have been dropping. In any case, it's a great time to be opening Lightning Channel. So, um, yeah, you know, we're we're not entirely sure, but this seem uh, I I think there's uh, some merit to this speculation that uh, you know the uh, mempool is cleared because blockchain.info has finally implemented SegWit. Um, the blocks tend to seem a little bit bigger um, overall, and you know we're we're clearing at a regular rate now, which is kind of amazing. HRF has another round of grants to the Bitcoin ecosystem. Congrats to Calvin, Abubakar, and Dhruv. Calvin is also getting funded by BitMEX. There are other devs that can use funding, such as John Atac. If you are interested in funding developers,
please contact me. Um, so this is uh, another um, uh, you know grant. I think it was two hundred ten thousand uh, dollars that HRF gave, and it was led by um, you know somebody in Korea. So a, a Korean developer got a decent chunk of it. Calvin Kim met him. Uh, he's doing some great work on Utrexo, which I featured on this newsletter a couple of weeks ago. All right, Lightning. Lightning Polar is a development kit for Lightning development. This is really nice. Uh, this is a really nice way to set up everything as running a full node, compiling a Lightning daemon and wallet with lots of connections is not easy. They use reg tests and support a variety of clients such as Eclair, C Lightning, and LND. For Lightning developers, this is an important tool to streamline setup. So, if you are a Lightning developer and you want to um, you know, get started on Lightning development. I think Lightning Polar can basically set up like a complex network for you and make sure that the messages and back and forth and everything else uh, it is, you know, it's like a one click setup. So now you can just go develop. Um, and as every developer knows, uh, a setup can be often more painful than uh, is more painful than the coding. All right, economics, engineering, etc. El Salvador is about to make Bitcoin legal tender. The announcement at Bitcoin 2021 has triggered a variety of responses, with Vlad Castilla arguing that this is bad for Bitcoin. My thoughts are summarized above, but there is undoubtedly excitement around this development and will likely mean good things for the people of El Salvador in the long term. All right, Square is building a new hardware wallet. The interesting part of the announcement is that they're soliciting community involvement. I'm not sure what that would look like, and open source hardware is in its infancy at best. I would love to see them do something like what Spectre has done and use off-the-shelf components along with auditable software to make another solid wallet for my multi-sig setup. Um, and that that's something that they're not uh, I, I, I'm not sure what their plan is, but more hardware wallets for multi-sig would be amazing. Blockstream and Square are teaming up to make a solar-powered Bitcoin mining facility. The idea is to silence the energy critics, and I get that, but it feels like catering too much to the green lobby to me. That said, I have no doubt that Bitcoin mining using solar power can be very profitable and look forward to seeing how these get deployed. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't know if uh, where it'll be or how profitable it'll be, but it's an initiative that they're doing to sort of like assuage the green lobby, it seems. All right, some quick hits. Uh, SEC brings the heat against the promoters of BitConnect. Um, they are um, going to, you know, have to deal with some stuff, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, given that BitConnect was uh, literally a Ponzi scheme. All right. Uh, Ron Stoner lists the best practices for traveling as a Bitcoin as from Casa. Um, very good tips. Uh, you know, you should do that. I did lose my phone during my trip and I kind of freaked out. Um, I realized that my OPSEC needs to be a little better and I either need to use a burner phone or have a backup phone. Obi Nowusu uh, con examines how opposing Bitcoin makes strange bedfellows. Um, so the article is interesting o ob's uh, articles all are um but you know he he's talking about the ccp and uh surveillance and um and things like that uh anyway it, it's a interesting article um worth reading if you uh if you like that sort of thing short explanation of why alts are scams uh so there are many uh explanations of that and i'm even planning to write a book um over the summer to talk exactly about that uh, but, you know, there's a short article there for you. Um, now that Bitcoin 2021 is over, I will be at the Bitcoin Standard Conference on August 12th to 14th in Mexico and BitBlock Boom in Dallas on August 26th to 29th. And the Programming Blockchain Seminar is in Mexico on August 10th and 11th. Um, and, you know, I, I train 14 people in Miami, so you can apply or uh, apply for a scholarship. Either one is great. On this week's Bitcoin Fixes This, I talked to John Fockery about hustle. John talked about the entrepreneur mindset that's not dependent on others and makes things happen. Uh, I thought it was a really fun conversation. Please check it out if you are interested. As usual, I read through last week's newsletter on Twitter Spaces, which you can find here. Um, I uh, The panel with uh, Robert Breedlove, Guy Swan, and Guy Hirsch at Bitcoin 2021, talking about the moral case for Bitcoin is available on YouTube. 
My other books, of course, are on Amazon, and Unchained Capital is a sponsor of this newsletter. Um, as the uh, you know press release last week showed, I joined as an advisor, and I'm excited to be a part of a company that's enhancing the security for Bitcoin holders. If you need multi-sig, collaborative custody, or Bitcoin native financial services, learn more at Unchained.com. And of course, Fiat the Lendas. This was a shorter one than usual, uh, mostly because I um, I was kind of sick, and a lot of the news, uh, you know, people kind of heard already through Bitcoin twenty and twenty one. There there actually weren't as many announcements as I expected. Um, so uh, you know, El Salvador being the big one, I, I did comment on that. But yeah, hopefully that helps you. Anyway, I will be ending this and stopping the recording. So yeah, see you guys. Thank you.